Okay, so here we go. We're looking at, uh, we're in section 2.1, which is functions. Let me just write it up here. Well, no, no, actually, I'm going to use the screen. So we're looking at functions in 2.1. I don't know if that's big enough. Yeah, you can see that. So what does it mean? So we're going to cover 2.1 today. What does it mean to be a function? Do you, does anybody know that rule already? Every x... Anybody know? What's it mean? To, what's the function rule? Every x goes to only one y. Have you ever seen that rule? That's what it means to be a function. Every x goes to only one y, not two y's. Can't have x going to two y's. So, um, so they're giving me a picture up there, and they're asking me, here's, here's the x's, here's the y's, and they're saying to me, is, is this thing a function? Is that, you know, here's the X's, here's the Y's. So does it fit that rule or does it not fit that rule? What do you think? Does every X go to only one Y or not? No. Because no. two go to one. Well, it's, it's kind of tricky, huh? Yeah, um, really, uh, this one's actually okay because, because if you think about it, Every x still does go to only one y. Like, for example, this x. No, in other words, what's bad is if you have an x going to two y's, like that. So if this, oh, okay. if this red went okay. to two places, that would be not allowed. Okay. But, uh, but it's okay for two x's to go to the same y as long as they're only going to one y. Okay. Every x must go to only one y. Does that make sense on that? So that's the function rule. So this one's actually okay. This one's yes. Yes, this one is a function. Every x goes to only one y. And, um, and then when, once it is a function, they want you to say, okay, what's the domain? What's the range? Do you guys know domain and range already? Domain is x values. Range is y. Yeah. x and y. Domain is x. Range. So this stuff is the domain. So that's why the answer is right there. And this stuff is the range. That's why the answer is right there. Is that good right there? Not too bad. So I'm, I'll move along. Yeah, this will be on YouTube if I'm going too quick. This will be stored away. So number two. Is that one a function? No. Yeah, what's the problem? Yeah, this 100 is going to two different Ys. So it's not a function. Is that making good sense? And um, so that means... That on the other parts, all you got to do is say relation is not a function. You don't even have to do the domain and the range. It's not even a function. All right, moving right along. Okay, so they're giving me, if you can see it up there, a bunch of points. Two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one. Remember how ordered points go. The first one is x, and the second one is y. x, y, x, y, x, y. I think it's easier to see it, like, vertically, so I'm going to write it that way. 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1. So the question is, is that a function? It can't be because they're, they're all they're multiple points. So, so remember what? Be real, be real careful and real precise with the function rule. Something's a yeah, function. One x to a y. So if y. every x goes to only one y, right? Mm -hmm. So, so notice if you're thinking it's not a function, you'd have to have an x that goes to two y's. Mm -hmm. We don't have that here, huh? This one's okay, right? Mm -hmm. They can all go to the same y. Mm -hmm. That's all right. That's not that's not one x going to two y's. It's not a problem. Is that making sense? On that. And then the domain is the, this side is the domain, huh? The domain is the x's, and the range, the range is just the one. It's just the one y value there, like that. That's all it is. We good? Yeah, domain is always the left side, domain is always the x's, range is always the y's. All right. Oops, I did the same one again. Mm -hmm. 
There it is. Okay. So this one, number five. Yeah, if I, if I write it vertically, I think it would be a little bit easier. So uh, remember, this is x, y, x, y, etc. So negative 8, negative 4, negative 8, negative 8. There's a problem already, huh? Mm -hmm. So this is the same x going to negative 4 and going to negative 8, isn't it? That's a single x going to two different y's, not a function. So that's what you cannot have. You can't have one x going to two different y's. Good on that? Not too bad? Okay. So on number seven, they're giving me y equals x squared. So now we're shifting. We don't have a picture. We don't have x, y points. We just got an equation, y equals x squared. And they're saying, is that, is that thing a function? How do you know? How do you know by looking at an equation whether it's a function or not? True. Yeah, it's a parabola. It's not one to one. Yeah, so you're right. On, yeah. Let me give you a simple rule because you're right. We could do all kinds of fancy things. You guys are thinking about the graph, and and that's all true. That's all really good. But what are you gonna do on that one? That, you probably don't know the graph of that one off the top of your head. You will. Well, you'll know that in about two weeks. You'll be able to look at that and just know exactly what that looks like. But, but, we, but we need a game plan that's not always thinking about the graph because that's going to be hard. So um, what's the game plan? Let me give it to you. Something is, uh, well, let's say it's not a function. It's a big in there. It's not a function. It's not. it's not a function if. It's not a function when or if. When. There's two ways it could not be a function. One of them is if you have y to an even power. y to an even power. Like y squared or y to the fourth. Whoops. Etc. Any even power is going to break the function rule. Or, or, number two, if you have plus minus anywhere. Otherwise, if you don't have those two things, otherwise, it is a function. Wait, what's number two again? Plus or minus anywhere. So those are the two conditions by which you would not be a function. So you're not a function if you have an even power on y or if you have plus or minus anywhere. Now, why? Why would even power on y wreck it? Let's talk about that for a minute. Imagine if you had like um, y squared or um, x equals y squared. That one's not going to be a function. Why not? Well, remember the function rule. Every x, let me write it again real quick. Every x must go to only one y value, right? Every x must go to only one y value to be a function. Can you all tell me, like let me do a little table here. Can you tell me one x that would go, there's a lot of them. Can you give me an example of an x that, with that equation that would make that equation true and go to two different y values, both, both making it true? Any number with its inverse. So give me specific numbers. One and negative one. One and negative one, yeah. If x is 1, y could be 1 or negative 1. Good, good one, Douglas. Right? Does that make sense? Right? Because if you put 1 in here, you could actually put 1 or negative 1. Squared would still be equal, wouldn't it? Do you see how the even power makes negatives positive? And so that's why, why it gives you two options and means it's not a function. That's why, right? Because it's kind of like uh, make negative uh, sign to positive. Yeah, because it makes negative signs positive. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the, so the x, the same x, is going with two different y values, both making it true in the equation, huh? So, so it's not a function. This, does that, that expands to any positive power, right? Or does it just stop at squares? Like, are cubes also not functions? No, no, cubes are okay. Yeah, why would cubes be okay? Because it's going to be negative. Yeah, if you so, do cubes and you tried to, tried to make it, break the rule it won't so it's so it's only even, even to it's only powers of four even yeah even right even oh okay I didn't yeah say that. so any even power any even powers can do that so like the two power the four power the six power all the even powers will make negatives into positives like um abdul
Mm -hmm. Abdullah saying, yes. Uh, negatives become positive, and that's the problem, right? Does that make sense? Now, what about the plus or minus? Why is that a problem? Well, that one's more obvious. I just two answers, right? Just write anything with plus or minus. Let me show you. Like if you have x is plus or minus 3y or whatever, you know, that's going to be that's gonna be x is 1, y could be plus or minus 3, right? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I did that backwards, huh? Um, that's not true. If um, x is 3, y could be plus 1 or minus 1. Wait, I am totally confused now. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yep, that's right. Yeah, right? Because if x is 3, y could be 1 or negative 1. It would times 3 would be 3. Yeah. Right, two options. That's the same x going to two different y's, isn't it? So that wrecks it. So those are the two things we look for. Even power on y or plus or minus anywhere, it's not a function. Otherwise, it's okay. Yeah. Um, Rebecca. Sorry, do you mean that you have the options of plus or minus? Yeah, yeah, they'll physically write a plus or minus in the equation. Yeah, we'll see. They'll physically write it. Let me show you. Now, let's do number seven again. So, finish up number seven. So, here's number seven right here. Y equals X squared. Is that one a function now? No. no. Well, careful. Yeah. No, because yes, because yes. you said Y. It yeah, it's got to be on Y. This one's okay. okay. Maybe we need to talk about that a little more. Look, look what it says. See, Y even. Now, what, why... So it doesn't say even power anywhere. So with math, you always have to be very precise. They mean what they say, and they say what they mean. So y even, not x. Now why? Why wouldn't x, let's, let's, in case you're wondering, let's take, it, let's take a look. Why wouldn't like an even power in x be a problem? Why wouldn't, wouldn't that break the rule? Remember what the rule is. Every x goes to only one y. Now would that, would that be the case here? Try to break it. Because why is the vertex? So this is 1, y can be 1, and then what else? What else could I plug in to make it true? Negative 1 and x. Negative 1. It must be 1, right? Now, is it not breaking the rule? No. That's not breaking the rule. That, those are two different x's. That is not 1x going to two y's. That's two x's going to the same y. That's okay. It's not 1 to 1, like you're saying. We'll talk about that later. But it's a function. It's a function. So you see how there's not a problem with an even power on x. It's only on y. So that's why it says that. Okay. So this one's okay. How about the next one? Y, number 8 here. Y equals 3 over x minus 2. Does he have an even power on y? No. Does he have plus or minus anywhere? No. He's good. He's a function. Number 9. Y equals plus or minus. There it is. Plus or minus. No good. No. It's not a function. It's got a physical plus or minus. Good? This will be easy, huh? You'll whip through these. Number 10 here. So number 10. X. Oh, no. I'm just copying it. X plus 9 is Y squared on number 10. Is that one a function? No. No. Because even. That's why it says no. Number 11, y equals 8x squared plus 6x plus 8. Is that a function? Maybe. What about that even power on x? It's, it's all right. So yes, it doesn't, it doesn't have an even power on y. That one's a function. Next one, number 12. No. 2x squared, 9. So you guys can answer this before I can even write them. You're right. These are going to be your favorite homework of the year. No. But, but they're going to get harder. Yeah. Even. So no. Good? Right. We're just going to do 2, 1 today. That's all we're going to do. All right. So number 13. 3x yeah, squared plus 3x plus 9. All right, functions, and we want to plug in negative 8. All right, so part A. X equals negative 8. F of negative 8. So remember how to plug into functions. We'll start simple, just plug in a number. You know how to do that, right? Then we're going to get to big, ugly things we plug in there and a bunch of algebra simplification. But let's just start with a number. So just pop in a negative 8. Let me just remind you of plugging into a function. Can you just plug in negative 8 there? Use your calculator. Work it out. You know, um, a function notation... If, if, if it was up to me, I would, have, I would have made these blanks. 
It wasn't up to me. But um, blanks, blanks would be a little... That, that's what those X's mean in a function. Are you aware of that? It's just a placeholder, huh? It's like the holes in a toaster. That's always the analogy I make for a function. The blanks, the X's in a function, are they're just holding... They're just a slot where you plug in whatever you're plugging in, in this case, negative 8, right? That's all the x does is hold that spot. So we get 3 times negative 8 squared plus 3 times negative 8 plus 9. And then just work it out. Is that what it is? 180, 192... Yeah, it is 177, huh? I remember seeing the answer on the other screen. 177, yeah. We got all the answers here. 177, yeah. Good? That good so far? You remember how to do that, right? Yeah. Let's go on to part B. That's just plugging in. Part B, plug in negative X. Negative, that would be positive. So we're just going to plug it into every slot. We're going to plug that negative X into every slot. So the first one will become positive. The one that's squared. That's you. So we get 3 times negative x squared plus 3 times negative x plus 9. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's 3x squared. Yeah, so that'll be 3x squared minus 3x plus oh, 9. Yeah. We good? So just plug it in negative x. All right. And now part C. So, so, so far so good on part B. So whatever they put in the parentheses, we plug into the slots. So a negative x would be positive 8, wouldn't it? No, we're just doing x. I thought you were just doing 8. Oh, no. So this is a totally has no relation to part A. We're not doing negative 8 again. So part A is over. Oh, just, oh. All we're plugging in is negative X. We're not doing an 8 or any other number. Yeah, yeah just plugging in negatives. Yeah, good question. Everybody see what we're doing there? So it's just a totally new problem. We're just plugging in negative X. Okay. Right, so, so, that, so the slot is the holes in the toaster is plugging in whatever they, whatever they put in the slot. Okay, now in part C, they're going to put the negative sign in the front. Instead of plugging it into the toaster... It's not in the slot, it's in the front. What do you do with a negative sign in the front? What, ha what happens then? All the signs change. Negative. All of them, yeah. The negative will go in front of the whole thing. So it'll be like negative. So it's going to distribute right on down the line, isn't it? So it would be negative 3x squared, negative 3x minus 9. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. Questions on that? No. So, see the difference. See the difference between B and C there. Mm -hmm. So in B, we're plugging the negative x into the function. And on C, the negative is in front of the function. So it's a different kind of situation. All right. Now, on part D, we're going to plug x plus h in there. So let me, let me rewrite what we got there. X plus h. So it's... Um, is it 3x squared plus 3x plus 9? Is that right? Mm -hmm. 3x squared plus 9. Yeah. We're going to plug in x plus h. Yeah. So on part D now, the last part, they're going to say, okay, now put in x plus h. All right. Do you know how to do that? Can you, so, so that means in the blank, right? So if it helps you, I'll go up here and just get rid of this x and this x and this x, and just put blanks, like that. And so we're just going to plug x plus h into each of those blanks. So we get 3x plus h squared plus 3x plus h plus 9. Good? Yeah, with the x, it's already there, and you kind of think, what about the new x? Yeah, just remember, that x is just holding a spot, just a slot. Okay, good. Now, do you know how to work this out? Do you remember yes. this from your algebra days? Yes. So, so we'll do it. So 3 x squared 
x squared plus h squared, and then this distributes. Good so far? No. Yeah, that's no good, huh? Uh -uh. Right, you're totally right, Abdul. Yeah, good. Is everybody seeing what Abdul's seeing? I've done it wrong. That's not true. I, I like to do false math every now and then because it's helpful. Because I just do the stuff that I see people make mistakes on a lot of times. Just to call your attention to it to help you not make that mistake. That's not right. That's not true. What's not true? You cannot just take that two and go square it, square it, boom, boom. That's not true. Why not? Do you have to get like X... Plus yeah, let, let me go over here. Yeah. Right. Yeah, let, you got to write two of the parentheses. You can't just square the items like that. That's not true. Instead, you have to go x plus h, x plus h. Foil it all out, and you'll end up with a 2xh in the middle. Is everybody aware of that? I see that mistake a lot. So we don't do minus. I always thought it was plus, and then the second part was minus. Oh, no, good question. The, whenever 2 is on anything, uh -huh. it means 2 identical. Okay. Yeah, there is another factoring situation, which we'll get to actually today even. Okay. Yeah, but this, but just when a two is on anything in math, it literally means two of those identical things. Okay. You know that, right? If I put a two on a seven, yeah. it means two sevens. It doesn't mean a seven and a negative seven, huh? Yeah. It means two whatevers. So, yeah. So then you got to foil all that out, and you will get an x squared. That part's true, but you'll get some other stuff, too. Yeah. Remember all that? Yeah. Remember uh, foiling out things like that? So did I do that too quick? You okay with that? So you just take the first one, the first x to both, and then the second one to both. So first to both of those two, and then he's done, and then you do the second to both. First to both, second to both, and call it foil. That's all you can do because there's no... Then those two right there in the middle, uh, they're going to combine, aren't they? So yeah. I was going to ask you, it doesn't matter if you put HRX in the front, right? It's the same thing. Right. H, H, either way, totally right. XH or, X, or HX is good. Either way, Maria, right, Maria? Yeah. yeah, totally right. Good question. So this would be X squared. Yeah, now what is XH plus XH or HX, whichever we have it? Yeah, it, why is it not x squared, h squared? When, when, when would it be x squared, h squared? When they're multiplied. When they're multiplied. Yeah, you remember all those little rules? We're adding, so we just add the um, invisible understood ones. It's 2xh, right on. Good. And then just bring down the other stuff. 3x plus 3h plus 9. And then finally, now we can distribute 3, and we're basically there. So it would be 3x squared, 6h xh plus 3h squared plus, and then the other stuff, 3x, 3h, 9. That's it. None of those are like terms. You really can't really combine anything, huh? Like terms are same letter pattern. We don't have any same letter patterns. They're all a little different. And so that's it right there. We good with all that algebra stuff? Do you remember all that? There's not a lot of trig in this, is there? At the end, we'll review trig. Last like two weeks, three weeks. We won't do identities. Calculus has trade. Yeah. Three x over x squared minus twenty five. Three x over x squared minus twenty five. This is eighteen. And they're asking me to find the domain. That's kind of weird. Domain. What? What is the domain? X values. Yeah, domain is <clears throat> allowable x values. Allowable x values. Now, what do we mean allowable? What's not allowable? Well, so so them, to continue with my toaster. That's I think I want to give you a, a physical way to think about this. So there's certain things you're not supposed to put into a toaster, <laughs> right? Like forks. Silverware should probably not be put in the, in the toaster. If you have a, um, a Barbie doll or a G.I. Joe, probably don't put them in the toaster. Probably be a problem. Right, so, there's certain, so those would not be in the domain of a toaster. Getting the idea of the word domain? Domain is what you're allowed to plug in. Microwave. What should you not put in a microwave oven? Metal. Any kind of metals, right? Tin, tin or metals, right? No metals. So that's not in the domain of the microwave. 
So domain means al things you're allowed to put in. Okay, so with that in mind, look at this function, 3x over x squared minus 25. There's certain things that you're not allowed to plug in. Now, now why not? That's kind of weird. There's, I mean, we get it with the microwave and everything, but how, why could you not put something in to that function? Because it makes the other side true, right? Denominator zero. Denominator yeah. zero. Oh. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, five or negative five will make that denominator zero. If you put in for x five or negative five squared is going to be twenty five minus twenty five is zero. Now, why is that such a problem? Yeah. Do you remember that? So zero. Think think about this. If I put zero in the top, wait here. Let me write this out. Zero zero in the top is okay. You know, like if you have 0 over 3, for example. Zero. Zero. Yeah, if I said, hey, last night, this is true of me. Last night, I had 0 thirds of the pie. That's just a weird way to say you had no pie, huh? I mean, it's weird, but it's okay. Nobody talks that way, but it's, you could do it if you wanted to be weird. 0 thirds of the pie, it's no pie. But you can't put that in the bottom. That, that's not just weird, that's just nonsense. 0 in the bottom is not okay. Right? Like if you go 3 over 0, that's not, oh, you can't say, well, that's just 0, too. No, it's not 0. It's not even a number. It's craziness. In fact, what it is, well, you tell me. Think about fraction. What is 8 over 2? 4, right? Because 2 goes into 8. You, you know how fractions work, right? The bottom goes into the top. 2 goes into 8 four times. So let's do that same thinking with this one. 0 goes into 3 how many times? 0. It goes into three and into three and into three and into three and into three forever. Oh. Doesn't it? It's not limited. It can keep going into three forever. Right. Infinity. That's why we say undefined. We mean it, it, there's not a number. Mm -hmm. That's what we mean. When you have zero in the bottom of a fraction, it's undefined. It's not defined to be a number. It's infinity. It's an idea. It's a concept. You can't have infinity. I got infinity pencils in my pocket. You can't do that, right? That's not a number. So that's why we say zero underneath is undefined. It's, it's not a number. So therefore, we never want to plug anything into a function that would make the bottom zero because that's not a number. That chokes it. That just wrecks it. So, so, so you can't put in 5 or negative 5. That'll cause a problem. So the answer is x. And, when, and how would we... Um, how would we formally do this? Let me be more formal. You guys are right. The answer is 5 and negative 5 can't be. But let, let me show you the steps. What you would do is you would grab the denominator and you would say, denominator, you can't be 0. So how would you formally solve that? You would say, all right, x squared minus 25 cannot be 0. Solve for x. We already know the answers. But how would you actually do it? You would move the 25 over. x squared cannot be 25. What do you do then? Yeah, root, root, root it. and root it, plus or minus. When you put a roof on the house, I said my dorky saying, right? When you put a roof on the house, up and down the ladder, okay, so x is plus or minus, whoop, not, no more root, root of 25 is 5, cannot equal, cannot equal. And that's what we said. You can't be 5 or negative 5, as we already knew. That's how you would formally come up with it. Does that make sense? x cannot be 5. And x cannot be negative 5. Both of those would cause the denominator to be 0 and wreck the function. So our answer then to this question is you can put anything you want. You can plug any number you want into that function. But you can't put in 5 and you can't put in negative 5. They, I wish they would just let us say it like that. They will later in about 4 or 5 problems down the line. They'll let you, or maybe 10 problems down the line. They'll let you say that. But not in this one. This one they want an interval notation answer. So let's change it. Let me um, get some room over here. How do we say this answer in interval notation? So we want to say x cannot equal 5 or negative 5. On an interval, they want an interval. Five, zero, here would be negative 5. Here would be positive 5. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say all this chunk of numbers, which go from what? from negative infinity up to negative 5, and all this chunk of numbers in the middle, which go from negative 5 to positive 5, and all this chunk of numbers on the right, which go from 5 to infinity. There's actually three chunks of numbers that are all okay, everything but negative 5 and 5. So how do you say that? Negative infinity. Remember, intervals are left edge, right edge. 
And parentheses, right? Because we're, we're not touching the negative 5. That's kind of the whole point, huh? Is we're not hitting the negative 5. United with negative 5, negative five to 5, that middle section. United with 5 to infinity, that right section. There's the interval notation answer. That's how they want it on this problem. That basically says all the numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity, but never touching the negative 5. So there's parentheses always by the negative 5, never touching the positive 5. Rebecca? Um, and it's fine because it says united that there's a negative 5 for, like, repeating. And yeah. Okay. Yeah, because this, this section is left of the negative 5. This is right of the negative 5. Good on that? So domain, so what do we do for domain? Denominator can't be zero. What, what did we do with that numerator? Nothing. Who cares? Numerator can do whatever it wants. We've got no problems up there. It's just the denominator. We've got to make sure it's not zero. All right. Let's try. Rather than me just diving into this one, let me give you a second to think about that. Give it a try. See if you can find the domain. What, what are we going to do with the numerator, the top? Nothing. Who cares? Top can do whatever it wants. We're just going to grab that denominator to find domain, and we're going to say, okay, the denominator cannot be zero, because if the denominator is zero, that's always a problem. That makes infinity. So denominator not equal to zero. And then can you solve that? Go ahead and solve that. I'll let you do that. What's that? Good job. Go ahead and solve that, see what you get. Yeah, I hope you're getting imaginary numbers. That's what Abdul was saying, he's right. Imaginary answers to this, let me, let me help. So how do you solve for x here? You can jump the 5 over, subtract 5 from both sides, right? Becomes a negative, well, well, actually, let, let me say two things. Well, no, let me keep going. I'm sorry, I'm trying too many things in confusion. Keep going, trying to solve for x, what do we do next? Divide by that 3. Good. So that would be, bring it over here. So that would be x squared is minus 5 thirds. And now how do we uh, finish? Yeah, root. Put a root over the left side, over the right, and the up and down the left thing. And no way. Right there, that's square root of negative. That's imaginary, huh? Remember that? Remember the square root of a negative number? You can't do that. Right? Like, like square root of negative 9. What is it? What times itself is negative 9? Nothing. Right? Negative 3 times negative 3 would be positive 9. wouldn't be negative 9. It's imaginary. You can't do that. Okay, so what does that mean about our... What's the domain then? Well, remember, remember what we're looking for. When we're doing... I know it's kind of gets confusing what, what's even going on here. When you're, when you're doing domain, you're trying to find what's not allowed. What, like with the microwave oven. Don't, not, don't put in metal, right? That's kind of what we're doing here. Don't put in... What? Don't put in what? Negative Don't put in... Imaginary numbers. So your problems are imaginary. Oh, that our problems were always just imaginary. So if your problems are all imaginary, this, here we were trying to find the problems, right? What makes the denominator zero? What are the problem numbers that make the denominator zero? What are they? Our problems are all imaginary. If your problems are all imaginary, you've got no problems, right? Right? So we've got no problems. So what's the domain? Anything goes negative infinity to positive infinity. Does that make sense? If the problem areas are imaginary, you have no problems. Anything can be plugged into that function. Any real number. Any, all numbers, all real numbers can be plugged into that function. Because the problems were only imaginary. Yeah, Douglas. Uh, mine's a little different. Um, number 17? 17? Oh, no, never mind. Yeah, we'll get to one of those other ones. Just a second. Yeah, we'll get to it. Good on the, yeah, I'm kind of going backwards. I started going backwards all of a sudden. Yeah, we'll get to yours. Yeah, I want to it make more sense this way, I thought. All right, yeah, yeah, so I know it's kind of confusing because uh, to find what's allowable, we look for what's not allowable. How about that? So when, whenever you say denominator can't be zero, you're trying to find what's not allowable, and I found that only imaginaries are not allowable, so therefore all things are allowable. That negative infinity to positive infinity is what is allowable. All things are allowable. 
negative 5 can be put into the x squared because it'll be a 0 on the bottom, but... Right. It, positive and negative 5 are a problem, right? Yeah, but wasn't... Uh, but you put those numbers in... But there's a parenthesis, so it means it doesn't touch it. Oh, okay. Yeah, good question. Everybody good with that? Yeah, that's why I had to put, if I put a bracket there, that would be wrong because you put a bracket, that would be straight on the number, and yeah, we can't do that. We can't be right on that negative 5. That's specifically why I said that it's got to be parenthesis. You're around the negative 5. Same thing here, parenthesis, parenthesis, meaning you're close to 5. You're 4.999999, but you ain't 5 right on. Same thing here. You're 5.0001, but you're not 5 right on, because 5 right on is a problem. Right? We, we can say that uh, the easy word for that, that uh, all numbers are going to accept it except plus, minus 5. Yeah, but they make you write it this way on this problem. They want interval notation. They want it written that way. Um, okay, let's do number, I think this is number, I can't 16. remember now. 16, yeah, 16. I'm working backwards, yeah. 16. All right, so what's the domain... Find the domain minus 4x plus 4. What's the domain there on number 16 minus 4x plus 4? One. Well, remember what we do. We, we, domain means find what, what's allowable by looking first for what's not allowable. So what's not allowable? Four. What are his trouble spots? What are we supposed to look for? Anything that oh, it's still on the board. Yeah. Denominator's not zero. So grab the denominator and say, denominator, you can't be zero because that's a problem. So where's the denominator? It ain't here. Zero. Anything goes. Next problem. If it's got no denominators, it's got no problems. There's no way to cause that a problem. You plug anything you want in there. How's it going to be a problem? It's just going to be, you put any number, put a thousand in there. It'd be negative four times a thousand plus four, whatever. It'll be a number. It's not a problem. Remember, the problem is only when you make the bottom zero. That's infinity. That's not a number anymore, and that's a problem. With me? If there's no denominators, there's no problems. So that one's anything goes. Negative infinity, positive. Any number you want. So 19, x minus 1 over x cubed plus x. Okay. So here's number 19 x minus 1 over x cubed plus x, and find the domain. Okay, so give that a try. Let me give you a second. I think you'll get more out of it and then if I just whip it out real quick. So try that one. Find the domain of that one. And I can help you later. Um, so, what, what do we do to find the domain? You're gonna get the, it can be any number. Denominator. The denom cannot be zero, right? That's the problem. I like no metal in the microwave. No denominator, zero, right? That's, the, that's what we look for right away. Denominator cannot equal zero. So, okay. Denominator cannot equal zero. So then I take that denominator, x cubed plus x, and I say u cannot be zero. And I gotta solve that, right? I thought that was a two. We good so far? Is that the same, like, saying that it can't equal zero, like you can't put in zero for x or? No, that's a different thing. Yeah. Right, so we're saying the whole thing, you can't plug in an, an x that'll make that whole thing be zero. That's what that's saying. Does that make sense? The whole thing cannot equal zero. So we want to find whatever x values would make that zero and say, don't plug those in. Is this making sense? I want to solve this. I want to find what x numbers. Can, can you just tell by looking at it? What could you put in for x that would make that whole thing be zero? Zero, first off, right? Put in zero cubed plus zero is certainly zero. zero. That's a problem. What else? What other number? Imaginary, only imaginary. Is there any other numbers that would make that zero? A negative? Yeah, how about a negative? Yeah, like a negative 5. Negative 5? If you put in negative 5 here, cubed, plus negative 5, is that going to be 0? No. That would be negative 125 yeah. oh. plus minus 5. That's not going to be 0, huh? Yeah. What about with negative 1? How about negative 1? Yeah, good question. Negative 1. How about negative 1? Put in negative 1 cubed plus negative 1. So it can be negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 
Need one? No, you two. So that didn't make zero. Anything else? What do you think? I give. You give up? Just just zero? It's just zero, just zero the problem? Yeah, so we, we, to be sure. So that was some guessing around, but we got to be sure. So go ahead and solve it. So you got to solve that. So let me give you a second. So I'm, I'm going to call your algebra teacher if you can't solve this. You're supposed to be able to solve this coming out. I'm just giving you a hard time. But really, you are supposed to be able to solve that from your algebra days. But I'm glad to help. That's why we're here. They, they could call this class advanced algebra. You know, you took beginning algebra, intermediate. This is basically advanced algebra. So let me give you, let me give you, rather than me just do it real quick, let me give you 15 seconds. Do something. You'll get more out of it than if I just whip it. Try something. We got to see if there's other answers. We know zero is an answer. All right, how do we solve? Anybody remember something from algebra? Yeah, what do we do? We just did how we did the interval notation for the five, five and negative five. Samantha? Yes. Samantha, sorry, five and negative five. Yeah. So what do we? Yeah. So we. What do we do? So it's going to be negative infinity to zero. Wait, how you how you come up with that answer? Oh, you're writing the uh, zero thing. Yeah. Well, I want to solve it first. I don't know if there might be some other numbers. Abdul thinks there's not, and he's usually right. But we gotta, we got to make sure of it. So first I want to solve it. I'm not ready to go to interval notation yet. That's interval mm -hmm. notation. I will go there at the end. But I haven't even got x alone yet. Subtract regular x from both sides. No, no, no. So we can give the x uh, like they have a like, like term. That yeah, they both have an x. Yeah. Right, right, right. you got to factor, guys. you got to oh. factor. So x squared plus, plus. You, you need to remember that. Can I give you a serious look? You need to remember that. Factoring. When you have high powers with zero, you've got to factor. So if you don't know that, it seems like many don't know that. You, you, need to, you need to know that. If you want to go to calculus, you will die if you don't know that. Yeah, because every problem will involve things like that. So, so, and, but I'm glad to help. I don't mean to be sarcastic or negative. I'm glad to help. But I want you to think a right thought. Hey, I need to... I got some algebra growth to do. You, you really do if you want to make it to calc. You got to be good at algebra. I'm glad to help. That's what we're doing here. But make sure you really pay attention to all the algebra things. Because I know it sounds like algebra. I did algebra. Well, you got to be a master of algebra, not just sort of slid through algebra. Really know algebra to make it in calc. If you really know algebra well, calc's not that hard. It really isn't. All right, so yeah. So when you have high power things, you always factor. Take out the x. What needs to go on the inside? X times x squared and x times 1. one. Good so far? Mm -hmm. Got a factor. Okay. Now what? Set it equal to 0. Can we factor further first off? Yeah. Can we do it a little bit more? Can't this go down further? Yeah. Let's do him. How's he factor? x and, and then what? Plus 1. Plus 1. Plus 1. No. Good. Good. Yeah, that's, you can't. Right. Good. Renee's right. So everybody see that is baloney. But it's real, but everybody, not everybody, but about half the class usually makes that mistake. This is not that. Really important that you know that. Really, it'll come up again and again and again and again and then in calculus like crazy. And if you make that mistake, it'll just continually haunt you. It'll just, it'll just wreck half your problems. Yeah. You need to know that the sum of squares, is what it's called, is not factorable, but the difference is. That's worth a whole little side talk. x squared minus 1, that's the one that can be factored. But x squared plus 1 cannot. This is called the difference. Difference. Difference means subtraction. Difference of squares. Why are we calling these things squares? Because this is x squared and this is 1 squared. Right? This is the sum. Let me separate these. Sum of squares. This cannot be factored. Let me prove it. I, I want to make it sink as deep as I possibly can in your minds. Because it'll come up a ton. It isn't just this one problem where I wouldn't waste all this time on it. It'll come up a ton throughout this course and in calculus. And it'll really mess you up if you're not real clear on it. So x squared minus 1. You guys remember that one, huh? How do you factor x squared minus 1? Yeah, 1 plus, 1 minus, 
That's that's right. That's totally correct. Let me prove it. Let me just check it. You don't have to, but I just, just want to make it really clear for you. Remember, if you foiled it out, it will go back. Let's prove it. Remember, x goes to both. So that'd be x squared minus x, and right, 1x or whatever. And then he's done, and then this one goes to both. Plus 1x or minus 1. And then these guys cancel, don't they? Plus x minus x. x squared minus 1, perfect. It went back to where it started, huh? Mm -hmm. So it's right. It's right. The difference of squares, a difference, a subtraction of squares can be factored 1 plus 1 minus. But the other one is the one that most people know that. They have no problem. They know that. That, that, that you know. This is what fools people. People look at this one and they think they can do the same thing. They think it's x plus 1, x plus 1, because that sort of looks good. But if you check it, you'll see it's not right. If you FOIL that out, it's x squared plus 1x. Now it's his turn. Plus 1x plus 1. See what happens in the middle? They don't cancel. They get 2x, and you never had a 2x up here. No. That's a no-no. Right? That's not true. That's not true. What they, it cannot be factored. That sign in the middle makes a huge difference. So you really need to know that. If you have squares with a plus in the middle, leave it. You can't factor it. If you have squares with a minus in the middle, you can definitely factor in, and you need to. That's for all of them, right? All the time. Anytime. So if I gave you something like x squared minus 9, how would you factor that? 3. Plus 3. Plus 3 minus 3. What if I gave you x squared plus 25? You'd leave it. No. Doesn't factor. It's not x plus 5, x plus 5. That's not true. If there's a value in front of x, it still, it still applies, right? Right. Okay. If they, somebody gave me 9x squared minus 4, can that factor? Yeah. Yeah. How's it factor? 3x. 3x, 3x, 2, 2, 1 plus 1 minus. Okay. What if they gave me 9x squared plus 4? No. 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 Okay. Right? So the plus in the middle wrecks it. Really important. All right. Get back to it then. Plus so minuses make the biggest problem. They do. So back to this then. I can't do what I was doing. So what do we do with this x squared? We're just stuck here. We can't go any further. Okay. I mean, we can't factor more. But yeah, now what do we do stepwise? We can't factor anymore. We can't do any more parentheses. But what we do still more of the problem though. So what do we do in the problem next? Can we divide out? No. Set it equal to zero. Like the x and then the other one you mean? Is that true? Is that right? Well, I know what you mean, but, but I mean, can I do that next step logically is what I mean. I, you're going down the line of doing, you're right. But just, is that step logical? Why, why can I do that? There was only one zero, now I got two? Is that okay? You just go from one zero to two zeros whenever you're in the mood? Can you do that? No, because X is time buffered. Because why? If they multiply by each other, then yes, you can. Right. Oh. Rebecca's right. Right? Think about it. Think what this is saying. If I said, hey, guys and gals, I'm I've got two numbers in my head. I do. Right now, I'm thinking of two numbers. My numbers in my head, if I times them, if I say, hey, guys, I'm timesing them, and it's coming out zero. Oh, what do you know about my number? At least one of my numbers. One, one of them's got to be zero. If I'm timesing two numbers, and it's coming out zero, one of my, the first one could be zero, because zero times anything would be zero, or the second one could be zero, because anything times zero would be zero, right? Well, that's what this is saying. He's talking to you. Are you speaking his language? He's saying something times something, parentheses is multiply, right, is zero. I, it says not equal, but whatever, same thing, equals zero, same, same logic. They're timesing to be zero, so the first one could be zero or the second one, or not zero, same, same logic, right? Does that make sense? So that's always, that's okay. Remember that from algebra, that's why that's right and true, okay? This one's done. Now let's finish up the other one. How do we finish this other one? Yeah, uh, I could do the steps, and I'm glad to do them with you. But you'd be better served if I, if I reminded you and said, hey, can you just look at that and laugh at it and go, no answers. Yeah. Can you do that? Let me help you do that. There's no way this is ever true. Look at it. What could you ever put in there? Square it, even if you put in a negative. If you square it, it's going to be positive. This is always positive. And then we're adding to a positive number. It ain't going to be zero. Are you kidding me? No, I don't need to fiddle with that thing. There's no answers coming out of that thing. If you wanted to do it formally, you could move the neg it over. It'd be negative one and then root. And there it is, root and negative. Imaginary. That's what I mean. There, there'd be the formal steps. But it'll save you time and effort if you can just look at it and laugh at it. Go, no way. That's positive and I'm adding. You can't add to a positive number and get zero. 
That ain't going to happen. Now, if that was minus, if that was x squared minus 1 or minus 7 or minus, then yeah, there, that, that could be root 7. Root 7 squared would be 7 minus 7. That, that can be 0. But not when you're adding to a positive number. It's going to be bigger. Positive. It's not going to be 0, huh? Does that make sense? And if it was minus, you could have just factored it, right? Yeah, if it's minus, maybe you could factor it. If it was 7, though, it doesn't factor so nice. Oh, so you would just move it over and root it. Yeah, so that'd be okay with, but anyway, so is that good? So there's nothing there, so the only, throw all that, that was a long problem. It just can't be zero. So we had it like 20 minutes ago, maybe, maybe it was 10 minutes ago, I don't know. But remember when we said it can't be zero? Yeah, that, that's the, now we know for sure. That is the only problem, right? If, if x is zero, it does make that denominator zero and wrecks the function, doesn't it? Anything else is fine. So, so so, yes, we have to do the interval notation. How do we do on an interval? How do we say on an interval x cannot be 0? x can be any number over left of 0 and any number right of 0. From negative infinity to 0, parenthesis, right? Not touching the 0. United with 0 to infinity. There it is. There's the inter that, that's basically saying every number but 0. Right? It's not touching 0 because there's parentheses next to 0. All right. Hopefully there were some good algebra lessons learned there. It's not just this problem, but all that algebra stuff is used everywhere. All right, let's move on. Number minus 36. Okay. So um, same thing, find domain. Now we're going to shift into a second domain issue, and that's our last domain issue. So we're looking at that function, and we're saying, okay, what, what could cause him a problem? Remember, domain is all about what you can't do, right? Can't put metal in the microwave. Mm -hmm. So what can you not put? Now, we don't have a do denominator here. There's no denominator. We don't have any problem with a denominator being zero, but we do have a square root. The whole thing's a big square root. What can you not put in a square root? What will cause a problem in a square root? Uh, negative Negatives, right? Remember, the square root of negative, like square root of negative nine. Right there. It's imaginary. Huh. Mm -hmm. Square you can't have a negative. I should say the total of everything. So it's not just that negative 36. Oh, okay. It's what I plug in for x and work the whole thing out. And after the whole thing works out, it can't be negative. Because square root of negative would be imagine, right? What what times itself is negative nine? Nothing. Negative 3 times negative 3 would be positive 9. It wouldn't be negative. Right? You cannot take the square root of negative numbers. It's imaginary. It wrecks it. So this is the other domain issue. So let me write it out. We have two domain issues. Number one, as we already said, denominators can't be zero. That's not our issue here. We don't even have a denominator. Number two, when you have the inside of a square root, you take out that inside and you say, hey, inside, you cannot be zero. No, that's not true. Sorry. Inside, you cannot be negative. I'm getting confused with the denominator. Inside, you cannot be negative. We can't have negative. Zero is fine, but we can't have negative. Square root of zero is just zero. It's not a problem. But you can't have negative inside of a square root. That's imaginary. Wrecks it. So how do you say inside? How do you say in math you cannot be negative? How do you say with greater than, less than, things like that, not negative? What's not negative, greater than, less than what? Positive. Not negative is positive, and how do you say positive? Greater than, negative. than, negative. than zero? Or equal. or equal, good job. It's greater or equal, right? If you're not negative, then you're positive, greater than zero, or equal to zero, right? Zero itself is not negative also, huh? So you can be equal to zero, because that's not negative, or greater than zero, because then you're positive. That's not negative, greater than or equal to zero. So we say, hey, if you got a root, you pull out the inside. You don't leave the root. You just pull it out, pull the snail right out of the shell. Say, inside, you got to be greater than or equal to zero. You can't be negative because negative in a root is imaginary, wrecks it. So that's what we have to do here, right? Grab that inside and say, okay, in, just the inside, no more root. Just pull the snail out. Inside, you got to not be negative. Not negative, because you can't have the total of the inside being negative. That'd be imaginary. So if it equals, after you do it, if it equals a negative, it's imaginary? 
so I gotta I gotta solve it. I gotta find what x is, make it greater than or equal to zero, because that's not negative. Greater than zero is positive, equal to zero, zero is not negative. So I gotta solve that. I gotta find out which x values will make that happen. So right, it's gonna be that. So let's solve it. Move the 36 over. 4x greater than or equal to positive. When you move it over, because positive, right, I added 36 both sides. Divide by 4. X greater than or equal to 9. That means anything 9 or bigger is okay. Is that true? Let's go back up. Is that right? If I put in, let's go back to the original. If I put in 9, what am I going to get? Zero. Yeah, 0. 36 minus 3 is 0, and that's okay. Square root of 0 is 0. That's okay. If you put in bigger things like 10, that would be 4 times 10. 40 minus 36, that's 4. You can do square root of 4. That's not a problem. But if you do things smaller than 9, like 8, 4 times 8 would be... 32 so have minus 36 is negative. You got a negative in the root. That's imaginary. You can't have that. That's why the answer is 9 or bigger. You can plug in x's that are 9 or bigger. And how do we say that in interval notation? Because they always want interval. Well, for now they want interval. Bracket 9 to infinity. You need a bracket because you're right on the 9 now. You get the bar bracket, BB, bar bracket, right? You're equal to the 9. You're right on the 9 or bigger. 9 to infinity. Yeah, when Maria. Sign, you yeah, good question. Negative. When you oh, divide by negative, okay. really good. If that was a negative 4 that I divided by, I would have had to flip it, exactly. Okay. But since I divide by positive, I don't flip. Okay. Okay. Only dividing by a negative, good. I thought about mentioning that myself too. Good, thanks, Maria. Good, we good on that? We spent a long time on that one. All right, so that's the second issue. We have two issues. Denominators can't be zero. Inside of roots have to be greater than or equal to zero, not negative. So we just look for those. So 21, 6 over root. Wait, am I doing that right? Where is that? 21, 6 over root of x plus 7. Yeah, that's right. All right, so that same thing. Find the domain. Find the domain on. Give you a second. So what do we do with that six in the top up there? Nothing. 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 We don't care about... The 6 has nothing to do with our thought, right? Nothing. We don't care about the numerator. So, but I do grab what's inside the square root. That's inside the square root. There's a small trick on this one. I wonder if you caught it. You, you say, all right, inside, you always have to be not negative. negative. We can't have negative in a root. That's imaginary. And what is not negative? Greater than or equal to 0. Because if you're greater than 0, you're positive. If you're equal to 0, you're 0. You're not negative. So inside, you have to be greater than or equal to zero. That's not quite true. I'm making one small mistake. Well, this one can't be equal to zero. Yeah, why can't this one be equal to zero? Because it's, also it's also a denominator. This one's both. This one's both inside a root and in a denominator. He's got both issues. So normally, if you're just inside of a root, then you can be greater than or equal to zero. You just can't be negative. But he also cannot be zero because he's in a denominator. Oh, okay. So get rid of the equals. He's just greater than zero. He's only positive. Right? He can't be negative because he's in a root, and he can't be zero because he's in a denominator. He's got both issues. So only positive. Only greater than zero. Move the 7 over. X greater than negative 7. How do you write that in interval notation? Parenthesis or bracket? Uh, Parenthesis, because you're only around the negative 7. You're not on the negative 7. You can't be negative 7. If you put negative 7 in that original one, that makes that denominator 0, huh? Can't do that. But anything bigger than negative 7 is okay, like negative 6. See how that's okay? That would be positive 1. Square root It's fine. Good. Anything bigger than negative 7. Like negative 7 point, or negative 6.9999 is fine. Anything just a little bigger. 
than negative 7. Are you getting this? Okay, so 24. x minus 5, 5x squared. Here's 24, right. Part B, f times g of 2. I'm just going to do part B, because that's harder. It's 9x equals 5x squared. What's that? Oh, no, g. Oh, okay. That's a g. That's a G. Oh, G. I'm so <laughs> offended. I, I have the neatest writing in the world. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I know I'm a sloppy writer. Just let me know if you're not clear on something. Okay. So we're supposed to multiply F times G of 2. So this is a times dot. It's not the O thing, not the fog. We'll, we will do that later in the course. The composite. And if you already know the composition of functions, that's something we do later. This is just multiply. That dot, that's just a times dot. So we're just, so right now we're moving into a section, there's like four or five problems here, where you add, subtract, multiply, and divide two functions. We're just dealing with all the algebra functions. How do you add, subtract, and multiply, divide? This is multiply. And what is that two doing on the right side? That's, that's times two, right? Multiply by two. That is not times two. And I want to make sure you understand that. But that's what a lot of people think. That is not multiplied by two. F, F and G are multiplied for sure. That means times. This does not mean, and it's really, really, really important in the long term, especially through calculus, that you start to think right thoughts about functions and not just think a simple thought. If there's parentheses, it's multiply. Uh-uh. That's not always true. You know that. Think about this for a minute. What if I go, what if I write that? Does that mean take the f function and multiply by 2? Is that what that means? Take x minus 5, take x minus 5, and then like multiply it by 2, so it's 2x minus 10. Is that what that means? No. no. You know very well that doesn't mean that. What does that mean? Plug the 2 in and get 2 minus 5, negative 3. That's what it means, huh? So let's hold the, let's hold the show for a minute and, and let this sink. This will do you so much good if you can let this sink to the deep parts of your mind. For a minute, I don't, I don't know. I wish we had a button where we could do that, but whatever. Let's just talk about it for a minute, and try, I'll try to impress it upon you by raising and lowering my voice and saying different funny things. I'll do what I can to impress it upon you, because this becomes really valuable in higher into this course, and and then especially in calculus, is to realize that when you're dealing with a function, something to the right of the function is not multiplied; it's plugged in, isn't it? That, too, is plugged into F, not multiplied. It's a toaster. That's why I made up my whole toaster talk, was because when I was teaching calculus years and years ago for the first time, I, I noticed everybody would take, they take something like sine. They remember sine, cosine, we'll review trig last three weeks of the course. Sine of, you know, 2x or whatever over x, and they would, like, go like that. I'd go, ah, you can't do that. Don't you know that? And they go, no, Mr. Heron, that's what we do. Well, don't do that anymore. That's craziness. And I realized that they didn't get it, that sine is a function. That isn't sine times 2x. That's not multiply. That's a function. That's like f of 2x. You, could, you wouldn't do that with f, right? That'd be crazy. Well, that's what sine is. That's what cosine is. That's what tangent is. That's what e to the x is. That's what natural log is. That's what all those things are. They're functions. So you need to realize that as you go higher in math. You realize those are functions. Those are toasters. And there's things. And I'm, the reason I'm doing toasters, I want you to visualize it's plugged in. It's in there. It's not just sitting on the counter next to the toaster. It's in the toaster. This 2x is in the sign machine. He's not just sitting out front. Now, if he was sitting out front, yeah, I could cancel an x out front. That would be totally fine. Because that one, yeah, that one's just multiplied. But this guy, he's like in the toaster. You can't be going in the toaster and doing that. He's in a function, right? So, so you really want to think that way. That's what this 2 is. This isn't fg times 2. This is f times g and then plug 2 into the answer, right? Anything to the right of a function, anything after a function, those parentheses don't mean multiply. They mean plug into the function, don't they? Okay, so really remember that it'll serve you well in so many situations if you're going to higher math. Okay, um, so let's do that then. 
Well, yeah, we're going to plug in for x after we first multiply these together. So let's take f and g and multiply them. So take this and this. And yeah, and then afterwards, we'll plug in the 2 for x. Exactly right. So we'll take the x minus 5, and we'll take the 5x squared. And then when we're done, we'll plug in the 2. Does that make sense? Multiply f and g, get your thing, and then plug in 2 when you're done. So just distribute, right? You can distribute from the right or left, same thing. So it'd be 5x cubed. Yeah, remember powers add, the invisible 1 power and the 2 add, minus 5 times 5, 25x squared. Right there. Now, take the 2 and plug it in, plug it in. So you get 5, 2 cubed, 25, 2 squared. What is that, 5 times 8? Yeah, 40. 40. Minus 60. Minus 25 times 4. That'd be 40 minus 100. Yeah, minus 60. Done. So that makes sense. So the, the moral of the story is the number in parentheses after a function. F, G, natural log, sine, cosine, tangent, any function is not multiplied. It's plugged into the toaster, to the function, right? That's what that is. So, um, okay. So, now, having done all that, you know what? There's an easier way. I mean, that's fine. You can do it that way. Let me tell you an easier way. The, uh, the other way is you could have just plugged that two into both of them first. Would have been easier. And then just multiply the answer afterwards. Instead of multiply before... You could plug in first, multiply later. Let me do that. Plug a 2 in there. Let me use a different color for emphasis here. Plug a 2 in there. Plug a 2 in there. There. So what do you get? 2 minus 5 multiplied by 5 times 2 squared. See what I'm doing? I'm just plugging the 2 in first, then multiply. Get negative 3. What's it? 5 times 4? 20. Boom. Negative 60. A little easier, huh? So that's, that's an option, too. You can plug in first and then multiply. It'd be a little easier. Either way, though, it'll work fine. So you're going to multiply F and G first and then plug in 2, or plug in 2 first, then multiply. Either way, as long as you're plugging in the 2, you'll be good. I'm scared of calculus now. <laughs> um, so... 5x plus 1 over 9x plus 2. 9x minus 2. 2x over 9x minus 2. I did. Yeah, I skipped. All right, so what they're asking for on this one, I'm just going to do part B, F over G. Yeah, so I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do the hardest parts. So they want F divided by G. So these problems are asked, right? Multiply by. So this is the hardest one of these. So take function F and divide it by function G. F over G. And simplify it. Yeah, good. So see what you remember from algebra. I'll let, rather than me just whip it out quick, you'll get more out of it if I let you try first. See how much you remember and then I'll finish it up. So put that whole F over that whole G. It's going to be a big mess and then see what you remember from algebra, algebra about cleaning that kind of thing up. Don't you have to times by the reciprocal? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to change the color here. 2x over 9x minus 2. Yay! Okay. So it's going to be F... Over G. All right, so F over G. Now, what do we do with that? That's called a complex fraction, fraction over fraction, big ugly mess. What do we do? Yeah, you grab the one on the bottom, flip it up, times by the upside down. Do you remember that? Why? Why do you do that? To get rid of it. Right, I mean, but why is that okay? You just flip things whenever you feel like it? Yeah, no, because you do it to the top and the bottom, right? Uh, yeah, that's true. That's, that's a good way to think about it. Uh, true, that's true too. You could just cancel the denominators. Yeah. Oh. Rebecca, do you want to add that? Uh, yeah, because if you're... I feel like I'm going to say it wrong. But like when you're, if you're trying to divide something, mm -hmm. you can really just multiply... Right. By the upside down. Because if you're making the denominator larger, you're dividing. Yes. 
Nice. I like that. Yeah. Multiplying or dividing is upside down multiplying. That, that's what Rebecca's saying. She's right. Right? Are you aware of that? I think you're aware of that. If I said, hey, I had six cookies and I divided them among two people. They each get three cookies, right? Mm-hmm. I could say, I took my six cookies and I broke them in half. Same thing, right? Multiplying by a half is the same as dividing by two. Dividing by a number is the same as multiplying by one over the number, huh? You know that. Multiply, dividing is upside down multiplying, isn't it? Dividing by two is the same as multiplying by a half, right? They're the opposites of each other, upside down. So let's use that. If you're dividing by that, instead multiply by the upside down of it. It'll be the same thing, won't it? So we say, okay, okay, we can do that. So it's just going to be... 5x plus 1 over 9x minus 2 times, and then you flip it. 9x minus 2 over, to see how I flipped it? Because uh-huh. multiplying is upside down dividing or vice versa. Yeah, I did. For this particular problem, could you just cancel out the 9x minus 2 when it's in division form? You really could, yeah. You really could. Because, yeah, that's what's going to happen now, huh? We're going to cross, do it, and you really could have just done that. Here you would the same thing. Five that's right. You one. can do that. So what are we left with then? 5x plus 1 over 2x. Yeah. So what I did, I don't know if this is the right way I want to know. I just did the top part. I times it by 9x minus 2 over 1, and then the bottom part I did the same thing. Yeah, that works too. Okay, so there's a lot of good ways. Okay. Yep, that's, that's right too. So there's our answer. We good? All right, so we simplified that. We cleaned it up. What did we do? We divided those two functions, and we cleaned them up. All right, now here comes the... The million-dollar question. Find the domain of this f over g thing. The denominator cannot equal... Right. So denominators can't be zero. That's the big issue, right? Denominators cannot be zero. Let me give us some room here. There's no root, so... Okay, now, the the trick is we have two denominators. (coughs) Now, what am I talking about? Well, first off... You can't just look at this final answer to answer the question. So that's a concept that probably is new to you. Let, let, me, let, me, let me explain that a little further for a minute. Let me go aside here. This is worth another aside. We did a lot of algebraic asides today. Do you know if you take something like, um, what would be the best way to say it? What, what if you take, um, remember how in your algebra days, if you had 2 over x, 2x plus 1 over x plus 1, we would always do what? Well, here, let's, let's, let's make it um, 2x. Uh, you cancel that out, right? You just go, well, that's just 2x. That's not true. I mean, it's almost true. Of course, something that's almost true is technically not true. That's almost true. Now, I know in algebra they told you that was true. If you had me for algebra, I, I told you. That was true, but I was lying at the time because there's just too many details. I'm not going to tell the whole story till you're ready for more of the story. Well, now you're ready. That's not completely true. In algebra, we just go, yeah, 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 close enough. But that's not completely true. What do I mean not completely true? Something is completely true. One side of an equation completely equals the other side when they do for every value of x. Any x I want to plug in, if these things are really equal, then any x I plug in, they better come out the same, right? Well, let me do a couple of them, a couple of them that work. Like, it's, it's true for almost every x. Like, if I plug in, I don't know, uh, 2 for x everywhere, right? It's going to work. 2 times 2, 4. 2 plus 1, 3. Over 2 plus 1, 3. Does that equal 2 times 2? These cancel. 4 equals 4, yeah. It's true, right? 4 equals 4. It worked for 2. Put in um, 1. How about 1? Yeah, that's the problem. Put in, uh, put in one. Is it going to work for one or seven or whatever you want? Two times one? It's two. One plus one, two. One plus one, two. Two times one. Cancel. Two equals two. Yeah, works. Okay, but yeah, there's one number for which it does not work. It is not true. Negative one. If you put in x is negative one on both sides, it's not true. Why not? Well, what's two times negative one? Negative, negative two. That's not a problem. Negative one plus one over negative one plus one? That's 0 over 0. And what's, what's this side? 2 times negative 1, negative 2. Well, you just cancel these. <laughs> no. No, you can't do that. You might. Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah, what's 0 on the bottom? What have we said is 0 on the bottom? Yeah, that's, eh, that's infinity. Infinity doesn't equal negative 2. So, 
this equals that, except when the denominator is zero. So these are not really always equal. They're almost always equal, except for the value of x that makes the denominator. Now, do we really have to worry about that? Yes. Hardly ever, but here is a time. The reason I'm bringing that up right now is because what that, what that means is if you, are, if you need a really careful, careful, precise, so what you'll do more of in calculus especially, analytical, exact answer, then you've got to go back to the one before it was simplified. Because really, the simplification is losing some of the truth, just a little bit. So what that means is, if I'm, they're asking me for a domain, and they want the whole story, I can't just work with this one. Why not? Because that was after the cleanup, and I lost a little bit of the truth in that cleanup. Nothing that really matters. For most practical engineering and stuff, it's good enough. But if you really want to be real, real picky, yeah, you got to go back to here before it was cleaned up and deal with the domain question there, not in the final simplified cleaned up version, which has lost a little bit of the detail. So, so this is a long story to say domain, you got to go back before the simplification. Okay, so here I am. I'm back here before the cleanup. Back here, I'm going to answer the domain question. Okay, so what do I do for domain? How do you do domain? You say anything under a bar, we call that a denominator, can't be zero. Do you notice there's two things under bars? This whole thing is under this bar, and this guy is under this bar. Two denominators, two of them, right? So, so the 9x minus 2 all by itself can't be zero, and the whole 2x over 9x minus 2 cannot be zero. They're both denominators. They're both not allowed to be zero. Does that make sense? If we had only looked at the final cleaned up, we would have only done the 2x. We would have never seen the other denominator because it vanished in the cleanup. Is that making sense? We set both of them to zero. We set both of them not equal to zero because they're both under bars. They're both denominators, aren't they? Mm -hmm. All right. So now, how do I solve? This one's easy, right? Just move the 2 over. No big deal. Move the 2 over. Divide by the 9. X cannot be 2 ninths. No big deal. That was easy. How do I solve the other one? How do I solve this one? Mm, 2X over 9X minus 2. So when you got a whole, we got a fraction on one side and a whole number on the other, put it over 1, make it look like a fraction, cross multiply. So I'm going to take this and put it over 1. Diagonal, diagonal. Do you guys understand the difference between cross-multiplying and cross-canceling? Up here with times, we cross-cancel. With equals, or not equals, you cross-multiply. So we get 2x times 1, not equal to 0, times 9x minus 2. Right? Diagonal, diagonal. And that means 2x not equal to 0. 0 times anything is 0. Right? Last step to get x along, divide by 2, x cannot be 0. So x cannot be 0, and x cannot be 2 ninths. Okay. Anything else is fine. But x cannot be 0, and x cannot be 2 ninths. There's two things that cause denominators to become 0. So did you track with all that? So we took f over g, cleaned it up, and then domain we had to do with the original one before the cleanup, consider both denominators, anything under a bar. Both, not equal to zero, solve them both. Not equal to two ninths, not equal to zero. That's the domain. And they let you just leave it that way. They don't, you don't have to write an interval. Let me show you. See um, right there? Not equal to zero, not equal to two ninths. Okay. They, they let you just choose that option. Yeah, question. Can you go back to the one thing? Okay, so you do one. Would yeah. they ever have you do an interval for something like this, though? They might, yeah. At other times, yeah. We good there? All is good. All right, so algebra gets a little, this is like advanced algebra now. We're, all right, so 29, let's, x squared minus 3x plus 8. X squared minus, x squared minus 3x plus 8. Okay, so now we're going to find f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Wendy's here, our, our friendly neighborhood tutor.
you guys get the email I sent out about yeah. the chat room? No. I sent it to whatever email you guys put into Match Excel from Wendy. Wendy forwarded it to me and had me send it to you all. So she's going to be setting up a chat room to help you. So anyway, so right now we are on the most important thing we've done all day. This is for sure the most important. This thing is called... No, 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 no need to memorize. You get a three by five card for the exam, but you don't even need to write it down. I would give it to you on the test. It's called the difference quotient. This will for sure be on exam number one in two weeks. Absolutely. I will put a different this right here. I will put one of these for sure. Why? Because you're going to use it in calculus near the beginning of calculus in chapter two. You use the difference quotient a lot. You do the same thing a bunch. I want to help you get ready. That is my job, is to help you get ready for calculus. So that's something you're going to specifically and exactly do a bunch of. So this will for sure be on exam number one. Let's, let's get it down real careful. Like It's called the difference quotient. Difference just means subtraction, and quotient is fraction. A quotient is a big divided thing. So that's the it got a subtraction on the top. That's why it's called the difference. And it's got a big bar. It's a big fraction. It's the subtraction fraction. It's kind of a weird name, huh? But it's the subtraction fraction. It's the one they use in calculus for derivative. Is that f of the absolute? Oh, no, no. Those are just parentheses. Just my sloppy parentheses. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's the derivative. When you put a limit as h goes to zero in front, it's the derivative, which is really important in calculus. All kinds of applications, physics, and everything else. All right. So here we go. Let's just, we're just going to do the algebra to see how you're doing with algebra. So first off, f of x plus h. So remember, this is where, again, I remind you that the x in a function, remember, it's really just blanks. It's just the holes in a toaster. It's just plug in here. So is here we go. Is like on our homework? Uh-huh. So x plus h squared minus 3 x plus h plus 8. That is f of x plus h minus, and then this will be f of x, x squared minus 3x plus 8. This, is that a take it that right? Minus 3x plus 8? Yeah. And then all over h. Yeah, so let me pause there. Do you see what I'm doing? No. What? <laughs> So you plugged in x plus yeah. h for x, right? X, right, exactly. So here's, minus, oh, I see what you did. Okay. So here's the function. Uh -huh. here's, the, here's the function. Okay. And, and they're saying, put x plus h into the toaster, please. Okay. And so I went, okay, x plus h, x plus h. And I wrote it out right in the purple right there. That's x plus h put in the toaster, f of x plus h. And then they said, and after that, subtract the whole original function f of x. And I said, all right, subtract parentheses because that way I'm subtracting everything, not just the front part, all of f of x over h. Uh, Does that make sense? We have to look at it a little bit. Yeah. And now we got to work all that out. we got to do all that algebra flawlessly. <laughs> I know, right? The next one will be harder. So, so let's work it out. You know how you wrote that in purple? Right. What part of that first part is the purple part? This that right here? Part. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's why I'm writing it above it. Maria, did you see how I put f of x plus h above it to let you know that's the f of x plus h? Oh, see. So and that's, that's the f of x. See the oh, above it? Okay, yeah. I yeah, I'm trying to clarify. Everybody see above it? I'm telling you where it came from. Okay. Oh, okay. I thought you were dividing that for. No, no, that's just. Like, what is that? That's just, yeah, I'm just letting you know what it came from. Yeah, no, that'd be really ugly. Yeah, no, that's. That's just saying where it came from. All of this over H. Yeah. Okay. So let's do now. Let's do now this part right here. What do you do with that? Do you have the squares? Can you just make it x squared plus h squared? No. no. You gotta write two of the parentheses and foil it all out. Can I just jump right to the answer to that part? It's so it's just x squared plus two x h. We good? Are we all good with that? And then the minus 3 distributes, minus, three minus 3x minus 3h, three plus 8. Now we have to subtract. Now this minus is going to distribute to all 3, huh? Minus x squared minus plus 3x. It's going to change all those signs, isn't it? Over h. So x squared x minus x squared minus 
Yeah, X squared cancel yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, Everybody good to there, though? So everybody see what I did? See how all those signs in the green changed? Oh, I forgot to put that in there. Right? That minus in front of the green changed all three signs, didn't it? So that X plus H squared, you factored it, right? Is that why? Foiled it, yeah. Foiled it there. Whatever, I multiplied it out, right. Yeah, so I can show more of that if, if you want to see that. Yeah, I did X plus H times X plus H. That's what I did, and I went boom, boom. Got X squared plus X H, boom, boom, plus X H plus H squared. That's what I did. Yeah, I foiled that out. Good so far? We're almost there. Now we're going to gather like terms and stuff. Let me give you a hint. These are so messy, and they get even worse, and... and um, it's easy to make a small mistake with a sign or something. Here's a rule to help. All the non-H terms, all the terms that don't have an H, should cancel or you messed up. It's a good double check. It's a good double check in your work. Your calc teacher, I'm sure, will tell you the same thing if you're going to calc. The non, when you're doing the difference quotient, the non-Hers should cancel out. All the terms that do not have an H will drop out at this point. They must, or you made a small mistake. It's a good double check in your work. So, for example, x squared. He better drop out. He doesn't have an h. He better cancel, does he? Yep. There he is. He cancels. Now, 2xh has an h. He'll stay. h squared has an h. He'll stay. 3x, he better go away. He doesn't have an h, does he? Yep. He's gone. The 8, he doesn't have an h. Yep. He's gone. See how all the non-hers dropped out. It's a good double check that you didn't mess up a sign or anything. The non Hers dropped. Okay, wait. Okay. And now we bring down H what's squared. left over. 2xh plus, plus h squared minus 3h. I guess that's it, huh? Over h. We still have that h in the bottom. Oh. Don't forget about him. He's important. Now, are we done there? Can we do more? This is where we become a master of algebra, not just a tinker fiddling around with algebra, but a master. Do you know the rules here for canceling? What's allowed? What's not allowed? Can I cancel those? No. No? No, because it's going to be the Actually, it's only if it's plus or minus, right? Okay. So the rule is pluses and minuses glue things together. And make them a package deal. Are you aware of that? Let me, let me do an aside for a minute. If you have x plus 2 over x, you cannot cancel those. But if you have x times 2 over x, it's okay. That's okay. This is no. Did you know pluses and minuses glue things together? Yeah, my analogy is always Costco. If you've had me before, you know my analogy. Costco, Sam's Club, those big warehouse stores. You know what I mean? You can't buy just one thing. If you go to Costco and you grab the milk or you grab the spaghetti sauce, it, you pull it out, it's plastic to another one, right? So uh, you got to buy two. You buy in bulk, you a little cheaper deal. You can't take your scissors to Costco and cut the plastic, say, thanks, I just want one. You can't do that. Well, that's what pluses and minuses are like in algebra. They glue things together. I haven't told you this yet, have I? No. No, okay. I don't want to be repeating myself. So, um, so plus, uh, plus and minus is glue thing. So what that means is if, if, if this has plus or minus, you have to buy the whole package or nothing. So in other words, if they both had, if this was um, XW over X, then you could do it if you, if you did both of them. Like buy the whole package. That's okay. You can go to Costco buy the whole package, right? You just can't buy only one. So that would be okay. That would leave one plus W, because X goes into X one time, and th this is one W also, but one times W is a W, so there it is. Does that make sense? So you can cancel them both. All or nothing with pluses and minuses. Pluses and minuses make all the hard rules in algebra. It's always the pluses and minuses. Multiplying is easy. Multiplying, dividing, rules are easy. Shortcuts work. Adding, subtracting, painful. Shortcuts never work. So one more time, things added and subtracted are glued together. Pluses and minuses are like Costco glue, making it a package deal. You buy it all or you buy nothing. You can't just buy parts, all or nothing. So getting back to this problem, can I cancel those H's? Yes, if they all have one. So I got to cancel one of them from him and him. What if there's like a plus 4H? 
four at the end? Can, you don't Good question. Yeah, what if there was another term at the top that was like plus four? Yeah. No. Can't do anything. Can't do Done. Oh, okay. Stop right there. Because you can't buy it all. You can't buy nothing, to use bad English. You can't buy anything. Right? Everybody with me on that? It's all or nothing. All of them, they're all glued together. They say, we're a package deal. You buy us all or you buy nothing. That's what pluses and minuses do. So if you can take an H from all of them, great, do it. But if there's one of them that you can't do it, then you're just done. That can't simplify. Does that make sense? So anyway, so we're able to take an H from all of them. That's good. What does that leave? 2X plus the extra H in the middle minus 3 done. Does that make sense? Now, the other way that, that would take an extra step, but might be more satisfying for some of you, is really what I was doing was skipping the step where you could factor the H out. Probably some of you guys have seen that. I heard some of you saying that. You could have just factored out the H. It's going to be the same result. You could have just factored out the H, and then it's okay to cancel. Well, no, wait a minute. Can I do just one? Yeah, because he's times. You see, he's not added. He's shopping at Save Mart. You can buy just one, right? That H is, H is just times. So that's okay. See, it's the same answer. It's the same thing as just taking one from each. You just factored out one from each and then canceled. Same thing. Either way, it's, it's, it's okay like that. But you, you can't cancel adding, subtracting unless you buy them all. It's all or nothing with adding, subtracting. Is that good? Time is running. 2, 30. Um, 5x squared minus 3x plus 1. 5x squared minus 3x plus 1. Oh, number 30. Number 30 there. Is that right? 5x squared minus 3x plus 1. Yeah. All right. So same kind of thing. We want to do the difference quotient. So f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. All right. So give it a try. Remember, those x's are just holes in a toaster. They're just slots. Don't let the X confuse you with the X plus H you're plugging in. They're just blanks, aren't they? So if it helps you, just go back and make them blanks. Just say, look, that's just a blank. That's just a blank. That's just a blank. Whoops, I'm getting all scribbly now. So you're going to stick the X plus H into the blanks, right? Make it sense. Stick the X plus H into those blanks. And then subtract all of F of X. So feel free to raise your hand. Wendy's cruising around. She'd be glad to help you. So I'm going to do the first step. Is that good? See how I got all the blue? That's f of x plus h. Everybody see that? And the green, that's f of x. Everybody see that? That's f of x plus h, f x, x plus h plugged into the slot. And then just f of x in the back. So do you factor first? I mean, uh, do you foil first? Yeah, i got to foil everything out. Yeah. So leave that 5 sitting in the front. Okay. And you, you know what we just did it a minute ago, right? So I'll just write it down. x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, right? And, and then, then distribute. You, then you distribute, right? Yep. Okay. And then the minus changes all the signs in the green f of x. Oh, so that 
Good. Everybody see that? Nice. Changes all the signs. The f of x, all the signs change in the green f of x, don't they? Okay. Now distribute that 5. And what, what's supposed to cancel on the top? Everything but h. All the non hers All the non-h terms are supposed to cancel. Mm -hmm. So that 5 is going to go through. 5x squared plus 10xh plus 5h squared minus 3x minus 3h plus 1. All over h. Okay. Now, we good to there? I distributed that 5. And now we cancel all the non-H terms. So he better, 5x squared, he doesn't have an H. He better cancel. He does. Um, minus 3x, he better cancel. He doesn't have an H. Yep, he does. 1 better cancel. No H. Yep, he does. See all the non-H. This will always finish this way with a difference quotient. That is, the non-Hers will drop out. Everything left will have an H. So you can cancel 1H from everybody with the H on the bottom. So that will leave me with 10XH plus 5H squared minus 3h all over h, and then you cancel 1 from each of those, and you get 10x plus 5h minus 3. Is that making sense? Super important for sure. One of those on exam in two weeks. Um, I ran out of time. There's like six questions left. Some of those are tricky. Some of those are on my old YouTubes. Look back at the old YouTube. I have two classes. Sometimes there's, just look around. There might be there. There might not. I don't know.